last time on The Bill. Tony, tell me what we got going on here. Well, our heads are done prep-wise, ready for assembly. We got our new valve springs to go with our uh, stronger cam. We had to match those so we would work properly. Okay. We got our new uh, rocker arm studs. We're going to be putting those in. We got our new intake valves and exhaust valves. We had to replace those because the tips were a little bit worn out and wouldn't be able to be straightened. Okay. We got our new uh, retainers to match the springs, new locks to go with the retainers. Then we got our brand new valve seals to replace the old uh, rubber umbrella seals. All right, sounds good. Let's start assembling. All right. All right, first things first, we're going to check the install height of our new springs. Okay. We can get adjusted for our new camshaft. Go ahead and take the valves. Okay. Just going to go ahead and put them in. That way I can just go straight on down the line. And we got our valves in. I'm only going to do this on the exhaust side because when I took the heads apart, they were the only ones that had on. They had the rotators. So I'm going to go ahead and take them, put them all the way on, on all the exhaust. This is our valve spring gauge. Okay. This is what we use to check the installed height. So what you do is slide it over. And you put the new put the new retainer on it. Got our brand new locks. And when you're checking the install height, you want it to be. You can't. Some some will be perfect. But as long as you're within five thousandths, okay. it'll be perfectly fine. Be okay. Yeah. Right. So I got this one checked and sit, reading one nine, one nine ten. Okay. So with that one, I'm going to take a fifteen thousandth shim and put it underneath the rotator, and it'll bring us at uh, it'll bring us down to one point eight nine five. Next, we take our shims and put them on. Okay. You always want the thinner shim to be at the bottom. Because all the pressure is going to be on that top shim and it could cause the thinner it's shim to warp. It? Right. Okay. And we're going to take our rotators, we're going to put them on the exhaust, and the exhaust only is the one we took them, took the heads apart. That was the only, the only valve that they were on. Okay. So now we got those on, we're going to take our valve seals, put them on. Now we got our seals on, we'll go ahead and take our valves. Get them all lubed up. You always want to lube them up because you go to dry start it. You go to start and they're dry, and they'll get hot and seize up. It'll also burn up the valve seal. Okay. So while I'm lubing these, it's also lubing the, uh, the rim of the seal up, the way okay. the valves slide up and down with no problems. All right, we got our valves lubed up and in place. All right. We're going to take our valve spring compressor. Take our new spring, put the retainer on there. And those lock into that groove so when you release it, it holds it right in place. Yes, sir. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to take the push rod guide, sit on the head, go ahead and take our Lubricant. Put it here on the bolt. Is that to make sure we get proper torque? Correct. Okay. The way we're not stripping out the threads. Everything get, tightens down good and smooth. What's the purpose for the push rod guides? I've seen some engines, they have them, some don't. The purpose of the guides is to keep the push rod stationary underneath the rocker arm and in the lifter. The way it's not moving around keeps it in one spot because the push rod moves, could bang up a rocker, could bend the push rod and break it, mess up the lifter, then you're just in a whole bunch of trouble. So on most performance engines you're going to definitely have a push rod guide of some sort. Correct. All right, now the studs are torqued. We got a complete product here. Ready to bolt on the engine. Ready to bolt on the engine. 